Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of the Green Industry Podcast. We have from the Kid Contractor Podcast, <laughs> the owner at Almond Landscape LLC, Brittany Almond. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Paul. You are and welcome. And thank you for coming to Waco. I love this place. Okay. And um, thank you to today's show sponsors, Gulf Coast Bookkeeping, for making today's episode possible. Do you mind getting the mic just a little closer? Is that better? Yeah, there you go. There? So how, good? Yeah. Okay. This place is awesome. I love Waco. I love what you guys are doing, even though I'm one of the only single folks here. So tell us a little bit about you and Caleb run a million dollar business. You work together. You have three children and a healthy or, you know, a real marriage, but it's valuable. A marriage that you're constantly working on. If yeah. you're not constantly working on your marriage, then I, I think eventually your marriage will fail. So, um, so Caleb and I, like you said, we, I own Almond Landscape. Um, Caleb crashed the company. You can find it back in Paul's episodes i don't know probably two years ago maybe i think we took we did like the real tell-all um but we have a landscape construction company hardscape division and then we also do stormwater work um we all we have three tiny humans that we keep alive daily and most days we succeed pretty well with it um running a business with your spouse and raising a family is what our speech was about today Mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of adjustments with each kid, with each, each thing. You know, raising kids, you have to be flexible. Being married, you have to be flexible. And running a business, you have to be flexible. You have to you have to take on whatever comes at you. There's no guarantee of what tomorrow looks like. Mm-hmm. And so as long as we keep that in mind as we're, you know, just doing our daily debriefing and preparing for tomorrow, there's nothing we really can't handle. And Caleb and I are really good communicators with each other. And I know that's not easy for everyone. And one of the things we pointed out in our speech today was if you're not a good verbal communicator, maybe it's easier for you to write things down. Mm -hmm. And so I suggest doing that. And, you know, I have a friend who wrote a three-page letter to her husband, and she was just talking about, like, just things that had built up and bothered her and she wasn't comfortable talking about. Wow. And they had a three-hour dinner at a Mexican restaurant in our hometown just working through all of those pieces and parts of like different things that you should, they just let build up and now they have something to work on. And whether it's business with a business partner or in a marriage, that communication and that open line of communication is important because if you don't tell me what's wrong with you or with me, I can't work on it and I can't fix it. Yeah. Andrew's married seven months. Is that correct, Andrew? Yes, sir. And he owns, he's a part of a business. He's an entrepreneur and I work at their uh, yeah. place every day. So I can see, because him and his wife work together, and I can see, I can sense it, like, oh, something, you know? And it's like, I'm single, so I'm taking notes. But that communication seems so important, because if, if you, Caleb does something that aggravates you, and you just suffocate it, right? eventually it's like a ticking bomb. Well, from it, what is, I, it, just, it just like, it just builds and builds and builds. And then what you what ends up happening is you get mad over something that doesn't really even matter. Like, you left your shoes out. What were you thinking? And he's like, well, it's just my shoes. And But really, there's a deeper meaning behind it. And so, Caleb and I, are we always try to make sure that we're not judgmental when someone has to say something. Um, or, you know, one of us have to say something. And we're just very open to criticism. And it's hard to take criticism. You, you don't like it if I tell you I don't like your shirt today, right? Like... <laughs> I do. I do like your shirt. This today, shirt's Paul. fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I like this but, shirt. I mean, no, one I like, no one likes to hear criticism. And so you, I think with maturity, you're able to handle that. And then just open communication with your kids, explaining to them, you know, why you're working late today, what the business is about, what we do. And we don't expect the kids to take our business someday, but it's definitely out there if they'd like to. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just a lot of communication. So when you have kids, communicate with them. Yes, I hear that for sure. What uh, it was the kind of driver to this event? Because your life's already, your schedule's already overflowing, Crazy. like yeah. full. <laughs> so I, you know, watch behind the scenes of these events. Why and how and did you pull this off? So uh, Entrepreneur Live up in Novi last year. If you notice the first one, there were only like five girls there, and it was mainly the oh. wives. It was mainly the wives of the speakers. Yeah. And last year, Brian invited me to speak with Caleb, mm-hmm. and you know we're ev- and they had the crazy COVID issue that they had to that. deal with, which props to Brian. Like yeah. I literally would have lost my mind if I had to be a part of that other than just speaking. But so I just noticed that there were more women. There were like thirty women last year. Yeah. And we even had enough to take a group photo. 
And so I was like, you know, what if there's all these women of all these business owners out here that that need a community, that need someone to talk to? Because we're all experiencing the same thing, but you don't necessarily have anyone to talk to about it. And entrepreneurship is like that. Like, chances are you probably don't have a whole lot of friends that own a business that get why you're so stressed all the time or why you can't go to the Saturday baseball Clippers game, you know, whatever. And so I talked to Liz and I was like, what if we like had just a women's event where people could come and, you know, we could build a community and we could all talk about like what we do with our husbands. And she's like, that's a great idea. And then I was talking to one of the other speakers that we have coming up this afternoon. And she's like, well, you know, if you're holding a women's conference about working with the husband, shouldn't you include the husband also so he can see her side? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like that makes more sense. Of course. And um, so the event was born. I got Liz on board first, and then Brian <laughs> followed. And uh, it came into Waco because Caleb and I had just, we took a third, we're really good at taking 30-hour, like, rally trips where it's just us, and we have no plans when we get there. And it's just a quick getaway. We try to make it under 1000 bucks. It's our time. And Waco was one of them right after Brian's event in November. And Caleb's like, well, why don't we have it in Waco? Because, like, that's a slam dunk for the men because – Every girl wants to go to Waco to see Chip and Joanna Gaines and their silos and everything. But, you know, we can still build marriages. We can still help create healthy relationships. We don't know everything, but we n- maybe you can learn from something that we've learned from. And so it just kind of all came together, and I'm so excited and so nervous. I, I think the Fullertons are rubbing off on me because I cried this morning. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, and Liz is like, why are you crying? I was like, I don't know. There's just a lot of emotion right now. And like the fact that people travel, like when you were up there, like from Vermont, from California, from all parts of the country, Pennsylvania, Indiana, like all the the, the entire United States. Yeah. To this event, trusting us that we would provide one piece of information at least to help, help better their marriage. I think like, that responsibility on my shoulders and seeing everyone like checking in and registering and so excited. I was like, holy cow, like we actually, A, we actually did it. And B, we need to put on a heck of a show. Mm-hmm. And so it was motivating, but it was still just, you know, that, that heaviness. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I know what it's like to leave your kids for a weekend. And some, some people in there, it's the first time they've left their kids. Wow. And, you know, the wives are having, it's hard leaving your baby for the first time. And so I understand that. And I understand that it was expensive to come here. And the tickets are expensive. And the food when you get here is expensive. So I am so thankful for the people that trusted us to come down here and and hopefully put in the work on their marriages. Awesome. And I love the networking part, just like at breakfast and lunches about to go down here uh, soon, like just you get to build those relationships. This is Andrew's first time coming to an event. You know, I hope he'll come to Launchpreneur Academy, and hopefully you'll do this next year and he'll be a regular. But you've only yes. been here for yesterday before we even left. He's like, <laughs> even if we left now, it was worth it. We did, yes. The thing didn't even start yet. He said that last night getting the hotel. It was like the meetup. Yeah. He's like, if we go home now, it was already worth it. Yep, yeah. 100%. 100%. And awesome. It's cool to be behind the scenes behind a lot of what Paul's doing. And then just be working, working, working. And then you show up at an event like this. I hear, you know, people saying, hey, you know, it really helps all these influencers, you know, pouring into my business and my life. But then when you show up and you feel it and see it, it's like you said, it's overwhelming. And I felt for so long, like no one gets it. No Mm -hmm. one cares. And then I literally started talking to Caleb Daly, like 2015 or 16 and Naylor before the social media stuff. We were like, I was like, oh, these guys get it. And I, and I felt like that as a man, I can't imagine the women, like yeah. the wives, they have to be like, no one understands my life. I, in my presentation, I talked about stuff that I don't normally talk about because I was trying to create that rela- relatability with people. Mm-hmm. And with the kids, I went through postpartum depression. This is the first time that I've, out, aside from the speech, that's the first time like I've actually said it out loud. And it was hard and it was weird to say out loud, but it was also comforting. And so I think a lot of like Liz and I's part in all of this is just trying to make sure that the women know that they have someone to talk to that understands what it's like to work with a husband who is so passionate about the business. You're not an entrepreneur and not passionate about your business. I mean, let's be real. Um, And so we just kind of want to be like the sounding board for them. Like, 
my husband's working really late tonight and you know it's like okay I've been there like you know talk to him about that like say we should go to dinner on Friday night to just catch up and you know make sure we're still on the same page and that just all falls back to that communication that's so important people people don't hesitate working 80 hours a week you know when you're an entrepreneur you work all the time you never hear anyone bragging about how much time they spent with their wife last week or how much time they played with their kids you know our kids love Legos and they're like can you build a house with me and I'm like oh hold on I've got to go make dinner I've got to there's always an excuse and every time I walk away from that like my heart hurts because I know what I just did and so you're constantly having to weigh your responsibilities like yeah I've got to feed the kids today but my kid also needs me so where can I cut time in my day to give them that time because they're going to be gone our daughter's already seven and that went so fast and you know she's getting out of like the little girly stage and she's you know she's becoming her own person so like that this whole conference is about that and just finding yeah. people that understand that Brittany what would you say to our audience I think we're like 92 percent men or 91 percent men mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Andrew nerds out on the Google Analytics yeah. and all of that <laughs> so you got nine out of ten lawn bros listening right now what's your advice that we could be more sensitive and because sometimes we can just be like well, I'm working later you don't get it like I got you know we can be stubborn what would you say to us you know as men who are passionate if you're a successful entrepreneur you have to be passionate about your yeah. about your business what would be your advice to us to have that healthy marriage I think I think the women understand what you have to do to build your business like we get that the long hours are there and they're needed but a come up with a schedule with your wife like you know I work every night till seven o'clock and that's just how it is in the spring and that really is how it is in the spring you have mulching and cleanups and all that kind of stuff but we spend all Sunday together or just make sure that your wife knows that there is this set amount of time that we are going to spend together and she'll have something to look forward to and it won't be so resentful it's like when you worked all week you're gonna work Saturday too and there's not that Sunday break or you know like Sunday should be reserved for the family. I don't believe work. I don't believe in working on Sundays. I, I don't let a cruise go. Out, I don't let anyone go out. And that's because I value that time with Caleb. And I know with he won't have to worry about the guys working. And so he can be here with us in the present. And so like this is your first time I saw him Paul's story away from your wife. Yeah. Like you should reward her with a day of just about her. Awesome. Because this is probably weird for her to not have you around. It is. Yeah. And it's not that it's bad. Like time apart is good. It makes you appreciate the other person better. But when you go back, take her to a special dinner. She wants to hear about your trip. She wants to know. Mm -hmm. But also ask her, like, what she did and how she felt. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, for sure. We actually got Monday planned. We're going to do some shopping and different stuff. So That's awesome. Cool. All right. It's okay. During the speech. I don't know. Yes. We have the best producer in the biz, so don't worry about I it. I know. Sorry, Mr. Producer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and conclude the show so you can get back to awesome. um, running running the things. Brittany, how can folks connect with you on Instagram and your guys' new new podcast that you seem like you're having fun with? We, <laughs> we are at the Kid Contractor Podcast. Thank you, Paul, for and Mr. Producer and Brian and Naylor and everyone for encouraging us and helping us get set up. Um, I know Mr. Producer works us, works with us daily to get all of our kinks worked out, but we do have the Kid Contractor Podcast. We have the Hardscape Academy, which is a training academy um, for hardscaping and paver patios and retaining walls and that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can find me at, at Almond Brittany, and Caleb will be at Almond Landscape. Awesome. LLC. LLC, yes. Don't forget <laughs> that part. <laughs> cool. We thank you for hosting us, and we'll let you get back to, to running such an awesome event. And, guys, stay tuned for – Together in the Trades 2022, correct? Nashville, Tennessee. Whew. That's okay. close to us, too. Awesome. Uh, thank All you, right. Brittany. You're thank welcome. Thank you, Brittany. Cool.